The children started showing up about a month or two ago. The boys and girls both dressed the same. Bright red shirts and white pants. Clean tennis shoes. Some of them looked as old as 10. Others as young as 8. They were unfailingly polite as they circulated the neighborhood, passing out their pamphlets. Have you ever wanted to start over? They would ask. Have you made missteps in your life that you wish you could erase? I looked down on people who let the children in. It showed a kind of weakness and an ability to fix your own mistakes. Then I got in an accident at work. I'd been trying to fix the gears of a broken belt when my manager turned the power back on. By the time someone hit the kill switch, three of my fingers had come clean off and the thumb and pinky were mangled past recognition. I found myself spending my days at home, popping pain meds and watching daytime TV, punctuated by the occasional call from lawyers or my insurance company. Already, the writing was on the wall. The accident had been my fuck up. The company would fight me to the last dollar. I just hurled my phone into a wall when I heard the knock at the door. I opened it to see two of the children there, a boy and a girl. They stared at my bloodshot eyes, the bloody wrap around my hand. Have you ever wanted to be whole again? Asked the boy. Where are your parents? I asked. Do they wait in the car or something? Our mother is always close, said the girl. They handed me a pamphlet full of promises of rebirth. Everything wrong can be righted, said the boy. All the bad can be burned away. Maybe they just caught me at a weak point. Maybe I just needed to get out of the house. Either way, somehow I found myself at a large house a few miles outside the city limits. A few days later, others like me had gathered too. Addicts, bearded vets with blank or shifty eyes. Some came in wheelchairs or hobbling with canes. Guys so fat that they struggled to walk up the house's front stairs. Inside, 20 or more of the children waited. They had woven garlands of red flowers, and as we approached they asked us to kneel. The flowers were some kind of red lily. I'd never Never seen before, completely without scent. A couple of people noped out right then and there, heading right back to their cars. But not me. Welcome to your rebirth, said a small girl as she placed the flowers around my neck. My hand was throbbing and my meds were already starting to wear off. For a second, I considered running back to the car to root my dose, but the crowd was flowing into the house and I didn't want to be left behind. Finally, we arrived in a large ballroom with a stage at the far side. The room was decorated with dozens of photos, all black, red, and orange, and when I stopped to look more closely, I saw that it was a house on fire. That was two summers ago, said the small girl, one of his first works. Many were taken to the mother that day. As she said it, the doors I'd entered closed, and a pair of children moved in front of them, blocking the way out. Then, on the stage, a young boy appeared. He wore red robes and appeared older than the other children, maybe 12 or 13. He gestured for us to approach. As we did, he paced the stage, beginning his sermon. I was once like you, he said, his voice echoing through the room as we plodded toward him. Everything was taken from me, and that's when I found out just how our city cares for the weak and destitute. I was placed in a home where the other boys beat and threatened me, where my so-called caretakers turned a blind eye. I'm guessing you all have stories like this. It's why you're here, because the winners aren't looking to start over, they're looking to stay in charge. Fuck yeah, shouted one of the wheelchair-bound men beside me. I might have died there in that sad house in the country, but salvation found me just as I hope it finds you today, said the boy. With that, he pressed a button and two large panels in the ceiling opened to reveal the sky above. At the same time, another panel opened on the floor below and a panel lifted up from below. The panel was perhaps 15 feet long and 3 feet wide, covered in smooth, black rocks. Sir, said the boy, leaping off stage and approaching a morbidly heavy set man. How long has it been since you felt whole and happy? The man shook his head, mouthing never. And you, ma'am. He approached a frail, meth-addicted, skinny woman who could have been 30 or 50, impossible to tell thanks to her blotchy skin and toothless mouth. Years ago, she said, Be whole, said the boy, and he reached over and kissed her filthy forehead. Am I better now? She asked, but the boy shook his head. Make no mistake, he said, I am here to offer miracles, but they are not without sacrifice. You must be brave if you wish to join me. Can any of you be brave, I wonder, just for a minute? But it must be a whole minute. With that, he reached into his pocket and removed some sort of rock. As I watched, the rock began to glow. Suddenly, the line of rocks burst into flame. Even 20 feet away, the heat was intense enough to make me sweat. 
I took a step back, moving toward the wall. I looked back at the door, but there were at least six children there now. My heart throbbed in my head. I wanted nothing more than to sprint back to the car and grab my pill bottle. I found myself shaking, despite the heat. Around me, the children knelt and reached their arms up toward the fire. Hail the mother, they intoned. Hail the womb of fire. The little girl who'd given me the flowers stood and spoke. My name is Angie, and this is my statement. I was a mother once, of three beautiful children, but I was a drinker, and in time, I chose the bottle over my family. They went to live with my husband's family, and I started drinking myself to death. When the mother found me, I was ready to die, but the mother embraced me, and now I am fresh and new. A small boy stood up. I am Diego. I lost both of my legs in a car accident when I was 40. My own fault, driving drunk on the freeway. I tried to kill myself twice. I'm sure I would have succeeded eventually, but then the mother found me and I was reborn. The lead boy gestured to the side of the room and a door opened and walked an old woman shaking with palsy. She wore a white gown, hung loosely at her bony shoulders. After each session, we send one witness back into the world, said the boy, someone who has seen the miracle and who can serve as a fresh example for the rest of you. Last week, June here witnessed the mother's kiss with her own eyes. Now she's here to prove it to the rest of you. You see, unlike some religions, we don't rely on faith. We let you witness miracles with your own eyes. June approached the fire. As she did, she loosened a string around the top of her gown and let it fall to the ground, revealing her old, naked body. Then she took a deep breath and began walking forward, into the fire. Stop. I shouted, but she didn't react. Instead, she kept walking forward. She screamed as her foot touched the first rock. The skin of her legs turned black, bubbling and hissing, filling the air with the smell of bacon. Her hair lit up like pine needles in a fire pit. Still, she kept stepping forward, even as she shrieked. What the fuck? Someone screamed. Other people were starting to back away, but most of us couldn't take our eyes away. Finally, even June's scream disappeared as her face melted and her lungs caught fire, but she didn't stop walking. Little more than a skeleton, June continued moving through the fire, step after step, until even her very bones seemed to disappear. The room was silent. Then, someone shouted, pointing. We looked at the far side of the fire from where she'd entered and saw a child emerge from the flames. The child touched her face with her own soft hands, shrieking with glee. Then one of the other children ran up to throw a blanket around her. June is reborn, shouted the head boy. Praise be to the mother. As the children repeated him, he turned to the rest of us and gestured to the flames. And now the chance is yours, he shouted. Enter now and be reborn, or leave and forget. Yes, indeed, we have a way of making you forget you ever entered here, of forgetting the wonders you've seen. But make no mistake, you will never be invited back. Nervous conversation filled the room as the boy looked at us one by one, trying to meet our eyes. Who has a fire in his heart? He asked, who wishes to accept the gift? Finally, a large man next to me raised his hand. I do, he said. I want another shot. The boy took his hand and led him to the fire. For a moment, they both stared in at it. You will walk forward, he said. The flames will lick you clean. Make no mistake, there will be pain. All cleansing comes with a little pain. There may even be a point when you think you can't go on. But you must not waver. Do not turn from the path. The mother deals harshly with those who reject her kiss. The fat man began to strip, taking off all of his clothes until he stood fully nude before us. His distorted body glowed strangely in the orange light of the flames, like something out of a nightmare, a man made of melted wax. Go forth, said the boy. The large man began to walk forward, screaming as the rocks melted the bottom of his skin. He took another step, then another, but as he moved, his steps became slower, less sure. For a moment, he looked out at me, meeting my gaze with his melting eyes, and then he tried to jump out. Something terrible happened as he leapt from the flames. The fire followed him, wrapping around him like a blanket. It wouldn't let him leave. He ran toward me, the flames licking him, his burbling fat boiling off his bones and smelling of burnt grease. Finally, he collapsed in my feet, a charred husk. A woman screamed. People started to rush for the doors. He strayed, shouted the lead boy. I told him what would happen if he strayed. I ask you to search your own heart. Ask yourself, am I strong enough? Strong enough to endure a short minute of pain to gain a lifetime. Fuck this, said one of the tweaker girls. I ain't exactly a strong-willed type. 
The lead boy waved to one of the children by the back doors. The child threw them open, gesturing for the crowd to leave. Most of them did, muttering to themselves. As they went, the child reached up a finger, touching each softly on the forehead. Ultimately, only seven of us remained. Line up, commanded the lead boy, and we did. And then we took our turns. The next guy, a scraggly old guy covered in tattoos from his wrists to his face, ran into the fire, trying to get it over with fast. He ended up falling face first into the rocks, screaming in agony, but he didn't stray. He crawled the rest of the way, even after his arms had melted off. And when he emerged, he was nine years old again, his skin wiped clean, his eyes bright. The next three didn't make it. Nothing as dramatic as the fat man, but just as horrible. I'll never forget their screams. After that, a couple of junkies held hands and ran together. One was about to make it when her friend tried to pull her back. But then the first one shook free and emerged as a child. Her friend ended up a lump of charcoal in the middle of the room. Finally, it was my turn. Wait, said the lead boy. Not you. You are the witness. In one week, you'll come back here knowing all that you do. You'll enter the flames and emerge reborn, just as June did earlier today, proving to a whole new group that our miracles are real. I nodded, not saying a word. Since that day, I've been sitting in my living room, counting the days. My hand throbs and I pop pain pills. The phone rings and I ignore it. Every night, I dream of fire. The children visit daily, sometimes peeking in through the windows. There are many more of them in my neighborhood than before. Perhaps they're worried I'll try to run away. I have never had a strong threshold for pain or a strong will. I'm a weak man, but I want so badly to be reborn, to have another chance. In the dreams, I see a great bird at the heart of the flames, its burning eyes fixed on me with indifference. And I ask her to be gentle when I enter her domain, to take my pain away. And the great bird laughs and laughs and laughs. Thank you to my superfans, Sweet Black Swan, Tacey, and Brooklyn. I really appreciate you guys supporting my channel, and I look forward to making more content for everyone.